Now, what about borders and mobility? During the height of the first phase, almost all countries around the world closed their borders. Mobility ground to a halt. And after the, um, the first phase of the pandemic, uh, as late as August and early September of this year, still over 70, seven zero countries continue to have their borders closed. For the rest of the countries, particularly the Europeans, uh, but other parts of the world, uh, there were tentative reopenings of borders. And indeed, as a result of that movement, including migration, uh, refugee resettlement, um, acceptance to adjudicate asylum applications, et cetera, et cetera, sort of started to flow again. Of course, the last month or so, Europe has been in an even harder place than the United States is now, in the sense that the number of deaths, which is, you know, one of the ultimate measures, but before you get there, hospitalizations, of course, is what it is that we need to look at rather than the number of infections. At the, you know, at the, when you look at those things, you realize that something did not work out. And that something also includes slight mutations of the virus, which is something that troubles epidemiologists very, very much. So borders, sort of opened a bit, mobility sort of, re, uh, you know, resumed a little bit, but the last four weeks, most of these countries have had to sort of pull back. And the challenge that they and every country around the world faces is very simply this, how can you reopen the economy? How do you slowly reopen the borders? How do you go back to having some mobility while at the same time protecting yourself and your population from the ravages of this particular disease, this particular virus? And this is really the challenge that everybody is facing. Now, as you all know, we, have a new, we will have a new administration in the United States. And you know, this is going to be an administration that be more forth forthright with and direct with um, with American citizens, and we are going to have much more cooperation with other countries. But at the end of the day, to repeat what I said a few minutes ago, we have to do our part. It is essential that we, each one of us, does his or her part. It is also essential that we listen to the people who make you know, informed decisions, that we do not get involved in the fact that New Zealand has sort of conquered the virus because we shouldn't forget that New Zealand is not only an island nation, but it's an island nation over there. And it has a very small population and it closed and shuttered both its, its economy and its borders to mobility throughout most of the past eight or nine months. Nor should we be comparing ourselves to Taiwan because Taiwan is a highly disciplined society. Again, it's us who enable the virus to spread. And that kind of sort of um, ability on the part of people to follow the rules is a big, big plus in trying to defeat the spread of the virus. The immigrants, the foreign born person who are in our countries, I don't care how they got to the United States, but for the last year, this entire year, they really bore the brunt of this virus. They have contributed, they have worked, they are the frontline workers. We need to make sure that everybody 
all hands are on deck and everybody contributes as we try to dig ourselves out of this vast hole that this virus has dug for all of us. 